System Working Group. It is my pleasure to welcome uh, uh, Greek uh, um, Alternate Minister uh, of Finance, uh, Georg Chulierakis. Uh, welcome. I think it's a very good, appropriate timing for this discussion. Uh, as, as you know, uh, Eurogroup discussed the uh, situation in Greece uh, on Monday and uh, the two main uh, topics, uh, which are the second review on the one hand and the debt uh, measures. I see as a positive element that there has been an agreement on short-term measures. However, uh, I see I'm worried on the fact that uh, still on medium-term measures, uh, was not possible to find uh, agreement on concrete elements, and this is surely, my perspective, a negative element. On the on the review, I understand that uh, there is a, the, the, there is a positive uh, assessment uh, of the budget, and still an important discussion on, in particular, labour market reform, uh, where. I would really find very, very strange and totally paradoxical that uh, the, the basic was this, the basic, the best, uh, and the uh, broad majority, very broad majority of members uh, applied uh, uh, new best practices would not be possible uh, as a consequence of a strange uh, nexus between. Uh, uh, condition uh, of uh, IMF, uh, uh, which at the same time uh, ask other elements that are not accepted on the debt, but then, uh, uh, so the, uh, uh, this dynamic, uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, is, would create some concern, and I hope that, on the contrary, the review would proceed uh, in a positive way. But we are here, of course, to listen, not my views, but Greek government views, and so I immediately give the floor to our guest, please. So, um, so thanks so much for, for, for inviting me. It's, it's my pleasure to be here. I've never been here before, so uh, it's a good opportunity for me to see where you're working. Um, what I will do is to make a statement of, uh, of about uh, 15, 20 minutes, maybe, and then give the um, uh, you know, open up time for uh, for questions and and, I would and answers. More fifteen, if just to give fifteen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, so let me start immediately, and I will start uh, with an update on the state of the economy. Uh, so in quarter three, um, Q and Q growth was uh, zero point eight percent, higher than we expected, and on a year-on-year -year basis, growth. Uh, was 1.8 percent, uh, the highest year-on-year -year growth, um, year, the highest year-on-year -year quarterly growth uh, uh, since the onset, since the onset of the crisis in quarter two of 2008. It is the second consecutive quarter of positive growth, indicating therefore that Greece is officially out of the 2015-2016 um, uh, recession and uh, uh, the outlook looks, uh, looks uh, positive. Economic recovery is, to a large extent, the result of the return of uh, stability, um, especially following the conclusion of the first review, and uh, the return of confidence on the medium-term outlook of the economy. Indeed, uh, for 2016, we expect an annual growth rate um, uh, with, uh, with a positive sign. We expect positive growth, uh, a little bit above zero, um, contrary to, uh, to what uh, many institutions were uh, expecting a few months ago. And uh, in 2017, we expect um, uh, growth of 2.7% uh, in constant prices. Um, the return of confidence is also reflected on uh, the net uh, deposit inflow uh, uh, during the, I would say, past uh, four or five months, with the exception of September, 
when people had to pay taxes and therefore use their savings to do so. But if you go back to June and all the way till October, the, <clears throat> there is a constant moderate but steady inflow of uh, de deposits ba back to the banks. Uh, October saw a net, a net inflow of uh, 1.1 billion euros, most of which were directed towards time deposits. Uh, and that's indeed a sign of, uh, of confidence on, on, on the part of, uh, of depositors. Uh, but also the new uh, spirit of confidence is also reflected, if you like, on the behavior of uh, uh, government bond yields. Um, maybe uh, the less noisy indicator of, um, of confidence towards the Greek economy uh, we are now at the uh, second lowest, um, the, the, the government bond yields are now at the s second lowest level since the onset of the crisis back in 2008, standing uh, uh, at uh, 6.5. I'm referring to the 10-year uh, government bond uh, yields. 6.5 is still a prohibitive level to, uh, to borrow, but uh, uh, the delta, the change, uh, from where the economy was back in uh, December 2014 uh, and then again um, in uh, mid-2015 and so on is, is, is significant. Um, on the fiscal side, uh, the 2016 budget, uh, I just re recall that the target of the 2016 budget was uh, a primary surplus of 0.5%. Um, uh, uh, and the actual outcome, we're still not at the end of the year, but we're approaching the end. And therefore, we can confidently say that the expected outcome will be significantly higher. We will overshoot the 0.5% uh, target by 0.6%. We expect uh, an outcome of 1.1%, a surplus, primary surplus of 1.1%. Uh, uh, and the 2017 budget... Uh, has been already submitted, will be debated and voted in the Parliament this week, uh, by Saturday this week. Um, no one expects uh, a fiscal gap, uh, obviously neither us uh, nor the institutions. Um, and I just remind you that uh, uh, we predict to meet the target of 1.75% of, of, of GDP uh, uh, safely. Of course, fiscal discipline and meeting uh, the primary fiscal targets is key in order to uh, strengthen further fiscal uh, policy credibility and therefore uh, return to uh, regain access to markets as quickly as possible, but it's not the only objective and shouldn't be the only objective. Uh, the second key pillar of fiscal policy is the fair distribution of the cost of fiscal adjustment now and the rewards of the coming, uh, of, of the coming recovery. And uh, to this end, and in the course of 2016, we have uh, legislated uh, a new progressive income tax uh, reform, and we, ha we have also developed a new uh, tool for uh, social protection, uh, the guaranteed uh, minimum income. We expect to roll out the guaranteed minimum income in 2017. Uh, so the budget of 2017 not just meets the primary fiscal target, but at the same time um, uh, it, it provides for uh, the necessary resources uh, for a new social protection tool, plus an additional 300 million euros for um, financing uh, health, welfare, and uh, education. Um, you, have to, you have to realize that the economy is... Uh, uh, coming out of, of a long recession of uh, uh, six years, uh, Greece lost 26% uh, uh, of its output. The last couple of years were roughly um, years of stagnation, if not recession, uh, and therefore creating fiscal space out of uh, nothing is not an easy uh, exercise. Always uh, macroeconomic policy is, uh, is, is a difficult exercise of steep trade-offs, uh, when you have no fiscal space, uh, things get even, uh, even, more, even, even more difficult. Um, in the medium run, the, the objectives of fiscal policy is to develop new tools. One of them is to identify areas where savings can come from. 
through a thorough comprehensive spending review. The spending review is at, uh, at, at this point, it, it's at, at, at the pilot uh, phase. Um, we are carrying it out in three ministries, but we expect to roll it out over um, the first six months of 2017 and therefore um, create, again, space for um, strengthening social protection. And the second main tool we, uh, we develop is to, and we need to do, is to broaden the tax base as much as we can. I have to be careful here uh, because um, uh, I often hear uh, the argument that uh, the Greeks do not pay uh, uh, taxes or a big segment of the Greek society doesn't pay uh, taxes. This is not uh, entirely true. Taxes in Greece are extremely high. Uh, the tax wedge uh, is uh, the fifth highest uh, among the OECD uh, member states. Um, but what is true? is that uh, there is a segment of society that tax evades, and, and that's exactly what we need, to, what we need to, uh, to address. And again, we develop new tools doing so, uh, legislating the electronic, um, the compulsory use of electronic payment methods um, is one tool uh, in, this, in this direction. So I will pause here as far as the state of the economy goes and move on to, to identify the roadmap uh, that we lay out um, uh, in, the coming, uh, in the coming months, uh, how we see uh, the path towards uh, sustained recovery. Um, and of course, given that the economy is already on track to recovery, the immediate, uh, the immediate task is to avoid uh, a return to, uh, to uncertainty. Uh, we know how much uncertainty costs. Um, we know it from experience. Greece has suffered uh, from prolonged periods of political uh, or economic uncertainty over the past six years, and we need to, min we need to minimize this risk. And uh, to this end, we do everything we can to conclude the second review as quickly as possible. <coughs> Concluding a review implies compromises, um, and we can discuss this later. Uh, the Greek government has already um, uh, um, made a number of compromises in this, uh, in this direction, so we want to conclude the second review quickly. Um, we believe that the second review will open the way to uh, participation in the quantitative easing exercise of, uh, of the European Central Bank. Uh, and this will obviously um, uh, reduce further uh, the borrowing costs of uh, uh, the Greek, uh, uh, of the Greek uh, uh, government and uh, pave the way for a, a gradual access to, uh, to the markets uh, to the markets again. Uh, talking about the uh, uh, second review, a number of files uh, have been already um, uh, concluded. Uh, these include uh, uh, product market reforms, a very wide, ambitious set of product market reforms, um, justice, financial sector, public administration, and the new mobility uh, scheme, uh, health, uh, education, anti-corruption, and so on. And there are still three outstanding issues to uh, wrap up uh, in the next days, and hopefully well before Christmas. We, we do expect that we will uh, uh, reach a staff level agreement by uh, within the next week or, or, or two. Um, the, the, the three remaining issues are fiscal, where uh, convergence has been significant, uh, and we believe we will be able to wrap this up quickly. Um, energy, where again, uh, our expectation is that uh, the issue will be wrapped up quickly. And finally, maybe the, the key sticking point of the, uh, of, the, of the second review, labor market uh, reforms. And I want to pause here and say a couple of things on where we are, what's the state of play of negotiations on the uh, labor market reforms. There, there are three key issues there. One is uh, reforms of the collective dismissals framework. The second is a new industrial action law. And finally, a new framework for collective bargaining. And again, for uh, the sake of, um, uh, for, the, for, for, for the economy of the, of the, of the, of the process here, I want uh, broach uh, the first two issues, 
mainly because we believe that the landing space uh, and therefore the room for compromise has already been identified. The key uh, remaining issue is the wage bargaining framework. And I have to make, uh, make it clear from the outset. We don't want to reverse the 2012 reform. What we want to do is to... 20. The 2012, 2012 reform. What we want to do is to stay, take stock of the results and the lessons that one can draw from this uh, uh, reform and correct its key drawbacks. So one of the main drawbacks of the 2012 reform is that collective bargaining broke down completely. Now, in the vast majority of the economy, there is no collective bargaining at all. It's not a matter of whether collective bargaining takes place at, uh, at the economy-wide level, the sectoral level, or the firm level. There is no bargaining at all. And that was not one of the stated objectives of that reform. That's exactly what we want to correct. So what we do is to devise a new framework that incentivizes firms and employees to engage at firm level bargaining. And we do so by restoring, if you like, lifting the suspension of the extension of sectoral level bargaining and therefore offering incentives for uh, firms and employees to negotiate at firm level. We do understand the need to strike a balance between fairness and protection on one hand and flexibility on the other, especially given the state of the economy. The economy, the recovery is still fragile and therefore the economy needs to have some additional flexibility. So what we offer um, um, uh, now is a framework that is, uh, I would say, more liberal than in many other uh, European uh, countries, but still in line with um, uh, the European framework and the ILO framework of, uh, uh, of uh, collective bargaining. Um, I'm, I'm confident that uh, we will finally be able to uh, reach agreement uh, in line uh, with, um, uh, with, uh, with the European framework again in the next few days and therefore be able to conclude the review, uh, the review quickly. Now, once the review is completed, we have to go back to the negotiation table and conclude um, one other key remaining issue, and this is the medium-term uh, debt relief measures. We now know um, um, the, the exact parameterization of the short-term debt relief measures, and we are happy and we welcome yesterday's decision to have them implemented immediately because they are very important very important, both in terms of substance as well as in terms of the signal they send out to, uh, to markets. Uh, but obviously the Greek debt won't be sustainable unless the short-term debt relief measures are supplemented with um, a combination, a constellation of um, the medium-term debt relief measures that the Eurogroup of May 2016 um, uh, describes. Um, obviously, the flip side of uh, uh, defining the medium-term debt relief measures is the specification of the fis fiscal path post-program going forward uh, after 20, uh, 2019. Uh, that's a discussion that remains to be, uh, remains to be, uh, to be done. Uh, our starting position is well known. Um, we think that uh, maintaining 3.5% of primary surpluses um, uh, for more than a limited number of years uh, is not sustainable. Uh, there is plenty of uh, economic evidence suggesting that um, uh, it's not feasible uh, or that it can be even harmful uh, for, for, for the economy. Uh, our preference would be to move quickly to um, a lower steady state of uh, 2.5 uh, percent uh, converging gradually to two in the long term uh, so as to create space and lower the tax wedge uh, that I was referring before, uh, one of the highest in, 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 um, in, in the, among the OECD countries. Um, but obviously, uh, it's a highly political issue. Uh, at the heart of 
discussing the fisc fiscal path going forward is a discussion on, on burden sharing. Obviously, lower fiscal, a lower and milder fiscal path implies uh, more debt relief. Um, we understand this, uh, and we are prepared to negotiate as quickly as we can. We need to have the second review completed and off the way as quickly as we can, as quickly as we can. So um, I think um, uh, within my 15 minutes, I will stop here and be happy to answer questions. Thank you very much uh, for this very comprehensive uh, uh, description of uh, the main element, the situation of Greek economy, and especially uh, review and debt issues. So, uh, first speaker for the EPP, I guess, is Mr. Kitsos. Yes, please. You Thank you, President. Go. Uh, Minister, thank you for coming here to inform us. Um, I have a question about some severe measures that have been taken by the present government. For instance, uh, there has been an increase in VAT uh, on basic consumer goods, an increase on VAT on uh, food, food stuff. Uh, there was also an increase in VAT in uh, islands with specific economic and social problems, such as the islands that um, uh, tend to uh, where, where migrants and refugee, refugees tend to concentrate, so we have some social problems there. Uh, we also have um, a reversal of VAT decreases that were made by the previous government as far as uh, services provided by in restaurants, tavernas, coffee houses. Uh, we also have an increase in, uh, in the cost of urban transportation and also an increase in the taxation of, um, uh, of energy taxes, petrol taxes, uh, more expensive as far as taxation is concerned, heating oil, etc. Uh, so these are very severe measures and that's why we have a a record poverty rate in both 2015 and 2016, despite the fact that the social situation was, uh, was problematic even before, to, uh, uh, during the previous years. So I have two questions. Uh, how much money did the state make out of these measures, which are very tough for uh, people that don't have the means? Uh, are, the, are they justified, these measures, in fiscal terms, have, uh, according to the results, of course? And do you plan to continue implementing these measures, uh, or do you plan to ameliorate uh, um, your economic policy as far as measures, uh, the type of measures are concerned? Thank you. Okay, so, uh, so let me start by saying that, uh, stating the obvious, I think that um, uh, fiscal policy and overall uh, macroeconomic policy is an exercise uh, in trade-offs, uh, an exercise where uh, any government uh, is facing um, a number of tight uh, constraints, financial, economic, political constraints. Um, fiscal policy in Greece, in particular, uh, in light of the state of the economy, is even more uh, an even more difficult exercise. So, you're facing a number of trade-offs. For example, um, maintaining your or enhancing your credibility, which is key, key to um, uh, regain access to markets on one hand, and use fiscal policy on the other hand to stabilize a an economy in deep recession, uh, engage, if you like, in anti-cyclical policy. That's a steep trade-off, very steep trade-off. Second trade-off, find the optimal split between public consumption on one hand and public investment on the other in light of the fact that available resources are limited. Third trade-off, how do you distribute the cost of fiscal consolidation? of fiscal adjustment, again in light of the fact that the economy is stagnating, 
How do you protect the, the most vulnerable households and who is bearing the cost? All these are complicated, difficult uh, dilemmas, uh, if you like, We uh, any policymaker uh, is, is, is looking for, uh, you, you will find it difficult to answer. Uh, so that's the framework we never, we should never forget we are operating within, uh, and not just this government, uh, but any other government. As I said before, the two key priorities in terms of fiscal policy of our government is to, to restore credibility by delivering, by meeting the significantly lower primary fiscal targets than uh, any other program before um, uh, faced up with, on one hand, um, and, do, and do so uh, while at the same time it protects uh, the most vulnerable uh, uh, households. Um, so in this context, we were uh, obviously, uh, uh, we, we had to, um, to raise taxes in the course of 2015-2016. Uh, um, the available tools we had were limited, and I would say imperfect. Um, one of these tools was the VAT, the indirect tax rates. VAT went up indeed from 23 to 24%, yielding 1.1 .1 billion uh, uh, euros. Uh, so anybody who asks a question uh, on, uh, on, the, on, the, on the consequences of, of raising the VAT rate should also uh, uh, answer a question on, uh, on the alternative, on what else would they have done. Um, our approach uh, is to, as I said before, is to uh, try to meet the fiscal targets uh, and therefore gain credibility, while at the same time using these resources to build up a new, safe, strong, uh, social protection scheme uh, where there was none. Uh, and uh, in 2016, we committed 272 million euros in this direction. In 2017, we will commit 760 million euros uh, in this direction. So uh, there is, uh, okay. there is a, a, clear, a clear attempt, a clear effort to, uh, to cushion the impact of, 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 uh, of the state of the economy of, on the most uh, vulnerable households. Turning now to the question of uh, the VAT discount on, on the islands, uh, I will give you a straight answer. I don't think that VAT discounts uh, can be used or should be used as a social policy tool. Um, we should develop and we develop uh, social policy tools to uh, cope with the consequences of areas with uh, um, uh, I would say difficult accessibility, uh, whether these are islands or mountainous areas, but indeed, indeed, we need to uh, offset the consequences of uh, higher VAT rates, in, especially in the islands uh, that, uh, that face the, the inflow of, of, uh, of uh, the consequences of the refugee crisis, um, and uh, some of them will be announced soon. So I'll stop here. We look forward me, to this announce. Let me, let me add something uh, which I think is it's important to keep in mind um, when we assess the, um, the policy measures of the past, of the past year. Um, the main opposition party is uh, uh, very much in favor of um, lowering immediately uh, a number of tax, of tax rates, including the VAT, uh, from 24 to 21 percent and from 13 to 11%, lowering the uh, tax on dividends from 15 to 5%, lowering the corporate tax, corporate income tax, from 29 to 24%, if I remember well, plus three other uh, tax measures. Uh, if, you, if you do the math, uh, you will find out that uh, the, the fiscal cost of uh, the proposals of, of, of the main opposition party uh, uh, comes up to 4.2 billion euros. 4.2 billion euros. So the main opposition party will have to say how they will fill up the gap of 4.2 billion euros if we want to take them seriously. 
Thank you uh, for the S&D group, uh, Pervash Beres. Yeah, uh, thank you. you. You mentioned in your expose that uh, uh, to enlarge the, the, the tax bases, you've been uh, using, uh, electro I mean, uh, using uh, electronic payment has uh, did help in this uh, field. So I wonder if you could elaborate a bit more, including following up on the previous question on how did this work uh, in the island, for example, because obviously um, when there's not so big cooperation uh, of the stakeholders in terms of the uh, uh, the one who don't pay tax or the one who play the game not to pay tax in Greece, uh, the money has to to come from somewhere. So how does it work that um, this uh, is improving? And maybe if you allow me a second question regarding the agreement that was made yesterday. When we were in Washington, uh, at the annual uh, meetings, uh, the little music there uh, by many stakeholders was that, uh, well, debt relief is something that, but what was even most uh, more needed was a political signal uh, to allow uh, 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 trust uh, in the uh, Greek economy to be uh, uh, on track and to make sure investment would uh, start again. Uh, do you think the agreement that was made uh, yesterday is going to be enough uh, for this renew of the investment uh, appear, uh, appetite in, in, in Greece? <clears throat> okay. Um, so, so, uh, so as I said in my in my um, uh, initial statement, we need new tools to be able to deal with. Uh, a series of uh, structural weaknesses, pathologies of the Greek economy, one of which is the narrow tax base. Um, again, let me clarify what I mean by the narrow tax base. Um, wage earners and pensioners clearly pay, uh, pay their taxes whether they like it or not. Um, other sources of income from rents, dividends, corporate profits, again, they contribute significantly Free professionals have um, also um, uh, they have also to cope with uh, an increased uh, tax burden over the past over the past um, uh, six years. Uh, all in all, I think uh, um, the average tax rate in Greece is in the tax burden uh, overall is uh, uh, very much uh, on, on the on the European on the European average, uh, not significantly lower at all. And the marginal tax rates in some cases are higher than in many other European countries. Yet, there is a part of society that still evades. And that, that's, that's exactly what we need to do, is to, 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 to bring it up to light and um, uh, find ways to, um, uh, to make it pay. So there are two new laws uh, already legislated uh, on illegal trading on fuel in Tobago. Uh, they offer a new framework on um, um, uh, battling against illegal trading, and we're hopeful that this will significantly increase tax revenue. Uh, both of them are areas, significant areas of tax evasion. And uh, in the next few weeks, we will also legislate um, the compulsory use of, um, of electronic, uh, electronic payments. Now, electronic payments has been, the use of electronic payments has been um, uh, more widespread uh, over the past year and a half uh, as a byproduct of uh, the uh, restrictions on bank transactions. Um, and, um, and the results were clearly positive. Uh, one, one of the reasons of uh, the overperformance of the, on the revenue side, both in 2015 and 2016, is the wider use of electronic payment methods. Um, so we are looking forward to this legislation, and we are hopeful that it will deliver uh, significant, it will yield significant uh, results. On the short-term debt relief measures, indeed, we, we agree that um, they are in the right direction. They are actually more ambitious than uh, the ASM was initially planning to uh, propose, but they fall short of made, making the Greek debt uh, sustainable, especially if we um, uh, settle for a mild 
uh, fiscal path going forward, post-program. Um, I think it's good news. I think uh, already the markets have uh, discounted um, the, the, the consequences of uh, the implementation of these measures. Uh, but I think we need more to offer a clear runway uh, for investment um, in, in, in the future. Thank you. I don't see is he a speaker, no Alde. So Mr. Papadimoulis. Uh, I have only one question, Minister. Um, what about the participation of Greece in the QE? Um, I think the European Central Bank made clear that uh, participation to QE has two, uh, two preconditions. Uh, one of them is the conclusion of the second review, and we are working hard in this direction. And the second is uh, debt sustainability. And again, the short-term debt relief measures uh, you know, work in this direction. But as I said before, we need more. Now, as part of the second, what we're seeking, and uh, I think uh, the Eurogroup uh, is, is again working in the same direction, is a global solution. Uh, the conclusion of the second review will come together with um, an agreement on the fiscal path beyond 2018, and therefore on the parameterization, specification of the medium-term debt relief measures. That will be enough, I think, for uh, the ACB both, you know, both necessary and sufficient for the ECB to uh, include Greece in the uh, quantitative easing uh, exercise. The expectation from then on is uh, that uh, government bond yields will fall uh, significantly further, um, that Greek firms will find it uh, significantly cheaper to borrow directly um, through, through the issuing of corporate bonds, bypassing, if you like, the difficulties of uh, the Greek, uh, Greek, Greek banking system, um, and, and therefore um, it, will, it will be clearly a step in the right direction, both for gaining access to markets and for economic recovery. It's one of the milestones of our uh, roadmap. Thank you. Sven Giegold. Thank you, Minister. Uh, I would uh, first like to say uh, something to, to my colleague Kritzos. Uh, I find it a bit peculiar uh, to uh, criticize uh, the Greek government for something which was basically supported by your party members uh, in your own group. So speak to your members from the CDU, speak to the, your members from the Dutch, speak to your members from, from Finland, and then you will know who has suggested and pushed for these sort of measures. And uh, uh, that is a strange debate. And uh, so, of course, it is not very intelligent to put higher taxes on the main resource incomes of Greece uh, on these islands. But uh, that is a matter which he uh, cannot defend. So they, you know in which decision situation they were. Beyond that, I would like to say that uh, at least the two parties seem to me in one thing equal to promise expensive things before elections knowing that they are impossible to implement after the election. So they are Syriza and your party are in a nice competition, which doesn't make them credible either. So, uh, but I have on substance the following question. Um, if I understand correctly, uh, the uh, high surplus target means that Greece is forced to uh, come up with additional measures, uh, and according to um, media reports, uh, the IMF is demanding uh, things uh, such as a further cut in pensions, a further reduction in the tax-free threshold uh, uh, at the lower end, and uh, which uh, from um, the current level of 8,600 euros to something between 5 and 6,000 euros. Can you confirm that? And second, uh, could you give us more detail on what you were saying on the collective bargaining issues. So what are 
uh, the different institutions demanding? What is the IMF demanding? What is the Commission demanding? Uh, what is the ECB supporting or not supporting? Because from our perspective, uh, the measures you are suggesting are fully in line with the spirit of the European treaties and, uh, I can own, and, and also the social charter. And I can also only say that I, our group regards this illegal if the Commission or any other European institutions contribute to put pressure on you not to fulfill the spirit of the, uh, of the European treaties. So, uh, therefore, I would like to, to know in detail uh, who is demanding what from you? Thank you. The 20, I, I mentioned before that the 2017 budget uh, has been already submitted and we expect no gap and therefore no need for, for additional measures uh, for next year. In the 2018 gap, in the 2018 budget, we uh, forecast no gap and for 19 and 20, uh, so the uh, leak was about 19 and 20. I'll come to that. Um, for the 2018 budget, we again, we expect no uh, gap, uh, but the European institutions expect a gap of uh, nearly 0 0.3, 0 0.4% of GDP. The difference between us and the European institutions is uh, just one. We uh, are in the process of uh, conducting a, a thorough spending review the spending review will be completed by June 2017, and the yield will be part of the budget of 2018. Uh, our moderate scenario, the baseline scenario we use, we use, expects a yield of nearly 700 million euros, and therefore we are prepared to take it into account in our 2018 budget. The European institutions do not, because they don't consider it as a parametric fiscal measure. That's the gap between us and the European institutions as far as 2018 uh, uh, goes. Uh, in good faith, uh, we are prepared to identify uh, other sources of savings now and close the gap uh, for 2018 anyway, and therefore use the yield of the spending review to strengthen further the social protection um, uh, um, uh, safety net. For 2019 and uh, 2020, uh, and then going forward, even if we assume that for a few years, for a limited number of years, we still have the same high primary fiscal targets of 3.5, and I have to uh, uh, remind you that we are not in favor of uh, having such a steep fiscal path going forward, but even if we assume that we do, given that we will meet the target by 2018, it won't be necessary to have additional measures in order to maintain it for a year or two uh, beyond 2018. Yeah. Hence, again, the European institutions expect no additional measures beyond 2018. But the problem comes with the IMF. Uh, the IMF uh, expects that uh, in 2018 we, will, we won't be meeting the 3.5% target anyway. Uh, their baseline scenario predicts a primary f fiscal surplus of 1.5, uh, and therefore demand indeed additional measures of 2.5% of GDP for 2018 and then going forward 2019-2020. 2 percent to close the gap between 1.5 and 3.5, and 0.5% because of the secondary of the second round effects that uh, additional fiscal consolidation will have uh, on growth. Let me tell you that uh, the baseline scenario of the IMF predicted a primary deficit of minus 0.6% in 2015, where there was a surplus of 0.3, off the mark by 0.9%, predicted a deficit of minus 0.2% for 2016, where we expect a surplus of 1.1% uh, of GDP, an entirely opaque, obscure uh, baseline that uh, is not shared with us, is not shared with the European institutions either, um, and therefore a tool that uh, it's not fit for the job, uh, to, to put it simply. Uh, obviously, Greece is not going to uh, legislate additional measures for, 
2019 and 2020. Both the pension reform and the income tax reform were designed, uh, agreed, and legislated a few months ago. Uh, and I make this clear. There is no chance that these issues will reopen again. And we have the European institutions on our side. And let me here make, uh, make a call to the European Parliament to support uh, uh, the case of Greece. Um, the first review included a pension reform, included uh, an income tax reform in, in the right direction, both of them, um, and there is no need to reopen them. Let me also add that last year we legislated a fiscal adjustment mechanism um, designed especially for this reason, for the event of a deviation from the actual fiscal outcome from target. So if we find out that indeed the primary fiscal balance is uh, of the target, the fiscal adjustment mechanism kicks in to adjust proportionately uh, the budget on the expenditure side. So no need, and this is something endorsed by the Eurogroup already, and something that has not yet been tested. Uh, so nobody has found it wanted. Huh? Um, uh, all in all, we think uh, there will be no need to legislate anything additional, and we also think that we have already a mechanism in case it's needed. Uh, we, 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 we strongly feel that the position of the IMF is highly ideological and uh, risks a quick, swift, and fair conclusion of the second review. On Bargaini, yes, but we have, we have to close in, unfortunately, in two minutes because that's our lot is going over. So if you could quickly. Yeah, on, on, on the collective bargaining uh, uh, issue, um, again, our, our feeling is that uh, what we offer, what we propose, um, offers the ground for a fair compromise uh, in the context of, um, of, um, of ILO and, and, the, and the European framework. Um, and uh, again, we, uh, we are sure that uh, convergence with the European institutions can be quick um, our concern, again, is uh, the ideological uh, partisan, I would say, attitude of the IMF on, on, on the issue. Obviously, we will not accept anything outside uh, the European framework because Greece is part of Europe and the Euro, uh, Euro area. Thank you very much. Uh, um, I'm sorry that we have to close here because our time is over. Um, I apologize with member that was in the speaker list that arrived just now, so was not planned. And so uh, and also apologies to the colleagues who asked for the cash DI. Uh, I think it has been a, a very useful meeting. And indeed, uh, I do think that uh, the parliament should, should stand on this issue with the basic principles of our treaties on uh, labor market uh, practices and international labor organization as well. So this is a very important issue on which I guess that Parliament would stick to, to, its, to the principle that we also consider should apply and do apply to basically all member states. Uh, so thank you very thank much. You so much. Uh, my pleasure.